Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I want to talk to you about building a bond with your teen. Now I've talked about a few things on other tidbit seg segment, segments, excuse me, and this one I'm going to talk about some specific things. And first of all, when your kids get to be teenagers, you have to remember, forget about being a control freak and forget about controlling their lives. They want some freedom. What you want to do is you want to be aware of what they're doing. Now one of the things that I mentioned in an earlier Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents is the importance of interviews. We started interviews when our kids were two. There were weekly interviews that we did, for them, we did with them for about a half an hour, asking them all kinds of questions about their lives, open-ended questions that we could find out things. We talked about things that if they needed to improve on things or that they needed to have course corrections in their life or with their schoolwork or whatever it was, we talked about those. Uh, we pretty much left. It was no holes barred. We wanted to talk about everything to help them. All right, that is a really powerful thing. And if you are doing those interviews with your child week on a weekly basis so it's consistent, by the time they get to be teenagers, you are going to have a strong bond built with them. They will talk to you. They will listen to you. I experienced this over and over again with my sons. Let me tell you another thing that we did that was really powerful. When your kids are in elementary school, you can go and you can be on the PTA and you can be overly involved and all of that. There's many parents that do. But once they hit the middle uh, school or junior high school age, it's different. Yes, you can still go and be active in the PTA and yes, you can go and be active in different things that are sponsored at the school, but it is still different. They've kind of gained wings. They're in the puberty stages. So what we did when, once our kids hit middle school, it was middle school in California, I know it's junior high school and other places, so we had every Friday night a party. We made it simple, it was nothing but crap food. We got pizzas and sodas and candy and any kind of other junk we could think of. And we told our kids to invite their friends and their friends could invite some friends as well. So it was opened every Friday night. So our, both my husband and I were always there. We were there, obviously, to supply the food and to make sure there was plenty of it, but we also did a lot of observation. We wanted to see our kids as friends. We wanted to see what kinds of people they were associating with. We wanted to see how they interacted. Who was the leader of the group? Who were the followers of the group? Who were the middle, <laughs> the middle uh, kids of the group? So we observed it. We got to know the kids. We asked them a lot of questions. We wanted to be a friend to them. We didn't want to be a friend to our, parent, our kids, but we did want to observe a lot of things. Those were enormously successful. We got to know their friends. We got to know the, the value system that their friends had just by talking to them. We wanted to know, you know, did they do well in school? You know, what things that, you know, what goals did they have planned for the future? Because Kids, when they, by the time they get to be teenagers, yes, you want to be an influence, but their peers are a huge influence on them. All right, another thing that we did is <clears throat> we had once a month, I would go and pick up one of my kids from either junior high or high school, and I mainly did this once they got to high school. I would pick them up for lunch, and I would take them to a quick lunch. Now, they could stay on campus and everything it was perfectly fine, but it was just my way of saying, hey, I'm just touching base with you, let's go grab a hamburger or let's go grab some chicken or whatever it was. It was pretty short. We only had about 35 minutes, so I had to scout out and make sure that there were close places nearby. I did this particularly with one of my sons who, he, his particular friends that he had had since basically birth um, were going a different direction. They were choosing a wrong path. It was one that our, we didn't want our son going down, and so we had really encouraged him. We didn't say to him, okay, dump these kids and go find new friends. We wanted him to go through that problem-solving process and come to the conclusion that, no, these friends were not good examples. They were not good for him and so forth, and he eventually did make that decision. So I was concerned because those two friends were part of a much larger group of friends and it left him pretty much alone for a few months before he was making new friendships. So I actually went every Friday to pick him up and to take him out to lunch for a while until he built up that, that bond of friendship with other kids and he had somebody to eat lunch with in the cafeteria. So that is another way that you can build a bond. 
Now, the other thing that we did is when your kids get to be teenagers, everybody's going in 50 million directions. But I said to our kids, okay, we can't eat breakfast or lunch together, but by crumb, we're eating dinner together. So at, when we did our family council meetings every Sunday, we put down the time of every single day during the week that we were going to have dinner so that everyone could be there and be involved. Those of our sons who were going to be there earlier, I engaged them in the process of making dinner. Now, it was twofold. First of all, you want your kids to know how to cook, okay? You don't want to just have them be going out to fast food and getting a bunch of crap and junk and it's not good for their health or anything else. So if my kids are going to be around, I involve them in the cooking process. Why? Because not only for them to know how to cook, but also I wanted them, you know, when you're cooking and everything and you're together, people are relaxed and you open up and you, you talk, you communicate. And we started theming one meal a week for each of our dinners. You know, we themed them like, okay, we're going to make uh, food from the Pacific Rim, from one of the Chinese, Japanese, or Korean food. We're going to make Mexican food, or we're going to make German food. And by the way, unless you really know how to make German food, I would su suggest not. Those were disasters. But, you know, it was getting them involved and so that I could talk to them while, while we were cooking up a dinner. The last thing is, is give your kids chores. And not only give them chores, but if there's something that needs to be fixed around the house, then either you or your spouse, you get in there and you teach them how to do it because while you're teaching them how to do it, you can also build a bond, you can also have a conversation. The most important relationships that you will ever have in this life are the relationships that you have with your spouse and with your kids. When all is said and done, when all the dust settles, those are the most important relationships and so those are the ones you want to nurture starting at birth so that by the time that they're teenagers and adults, and they leave home, that you still have this amazing bond of love and friendship. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.